Namaskaram. Urinary tract infection is a very common clinical scenario encountered in pediatric patients, as also amongst people closely known to us. Recently, the Indian Society of Pediatric Nephrology has revised its earlier guidelines in the year 2023, and it is of paramount importance we know the same. I urge you watch the video till the end, as the salient points have been summarized in the end, and it is mainly on the management of urinary tract infections and not on VUR that I focused this video on. So first, let us review the common definitions which the ISPN has clarified. As per it, leukocyturia is presence of more than 10 leukocytes per millimeter cube in an uncentrifuged fresh sample of urine or more than 5 leukocytes per high power field in a centrifuged urine sample. Bacteria urea on the other hand means presence of one or more bacteria per oil immersion field in a freshly voided uncentrifuged urinary sample. Acute pyelonephritis is bacterial infection of the upper urinary tract that is renal parenchyma. Cystitis is bacterial infection of the bladder characterized by dysuria, frequency, urgency and suprapubic tenderness. Febrile UTI is fever that is temperature more than 38 more than equal to 38 degrees centigrade with positive urine culture defined by the presence of significant colony count of a single uropathogen. Here they have mentioned significant colony count and I shall be discussing the cutoffs later. Recurrent UTI is two episodes of UTI during any time, any time period during the childhood. To diagnose UTI, the clean catch method is used for toilet trained children. For non-toilet trained but stable children, clean catch should be attempted initially. But if it is unsuccessful, the urine sample may be collected by catheterization or suprapubic aspiration. And in patients who are infants, catheterization and suprapubic aspiration are the preferred methods for correction of urine. The diagnosis of UTI should be based on a positive urine culture in the presence of suggestive symptoms. The urinary cutoffs for uropathogenic bacteria highly suggestive of UTI which I had been discussing earlier are a single bacterium in suprapubic aspirate sample more than equal to 10 to the power 3 bacteria in a sample obtained with by catheterization and a bacteria more than equal to 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the for screening urine dipstick for leukocyte esterase and nitrite are the first line screening test for UTI and what is leukocyte esterase? It is an enzyme found in WBCs and is detected in urine when the WBCs are recruited to that site. That is in urinary tract infection they will, they will be recruited to the urinary tract and if it is positive it suggests the presence of WBCs and is a surrogate marker for urinary tract infection. So is nitrite. Nitrite is seen only due to bacterial nitrate reductase activity. So if nitrite is present in the urine, it implies that bacteria are also present in the urine and therefore it is suggestive of urinary tract infection. Ultrasound scan of the urinary tract should be performed after an episode of urinary tract infection in all children. Earlier, a particular indication was there for uh, conducting this ultrasound. A particular age group was mentioned. But when we were residents, a particular age group was mentioned. But now it says that ultrasound scan should be done after an episode of UTI in all children. The guidelines suggest performing MCU in children with one of the following. That is urinary tract infection caused by non-E. coli uropathogens in children less than 2 years, abnormal ultrasound scan or a history of recurrent UTI. Indications for imaging following UTI. Ultrasound should be done in all patients following UTI. Following means after UTI. The advantage that is that it is non-invasive, has no radiation exposure and provides dynamic images. But the limitation is that it is operator dependent. Like someone may say that it is grade 2 VUR while to someone it may appear as grade 3 VUR. So it is, there is inter-operator variability. MCU is done in patients with abnormal ultrasound as the screening test. Patients aged less than 2 years with non-E. coli UTI and patients with recurrent UTI. So these are the three indications for performing 
bitter rating system erythrogram the advantage is that it enables grading of ur provides detailed anatomic delineation of the urinary tract but the disadvantage is that it has radiation exposure it is invasive and therefore it carries a risk of urinary tract infection iatrogenically antibiotic therapy should be initiated as early as possible preferably within 48 to 72 hours of the onset of fever change the antibiotic therapy only in patients with clinical treatment failure regardless of the antibiotic sensitivity patterns this is very important most of the clinicians don't know this and when the urinary urine culture report comes then even if the patient is improving they would change the antibiotic and switch on to a higher grade antibiotic which is absolutely not indicated and is neither justified in acute symptomatic uti the total duration of antibiotic is 7 to 10 days whereas in children with cystitis 3 to 7 days of oral antibiotic therapy is recommended in asymptomatic bacteriuria neither are the initial empirical therapy the recommendations say that the initial empirical therapy in patients with suspected febrile uti include third generation cephalosporins or amoxiclav in adolescents with cystitis first generation cephalosporins which include cefalexin and cefadroxil or amoxiclav are to be used oral route is preferred over iv route for administration of antibiotic therapy for treatment of acute febrile uti in all patients antibiotic prophylaxis is required in recurrent febrile uti and in bladder bowel dysfunction both of which in both of which conditions antibiotics must be given irrespective of whether or not primary vesicouretric reflux is present so these are the two standalone conditions when antibiotic prophylaxis should be given again antibiotic prophylaxis is required in high grade vur that is grade 3 to 5 which you must give all toilet trained children who develop utis should definitely be evaluated for bladder bowel dysfunction Antibiotic prophylaxis for the prevention of recurrent febrile UTI is required in high grade VUR but no antibiotic prophylaxis is required for prevention of UTI in patients with normal urinary tract and absence of bladder bowel dysfunction or in patients with symptomatic UTI with antenatally detected hydronephrosis while awaiting evaluation so if the patient has been antenatally diagnosed as uh, having hydronephrosis the recommendations for prevention include circumcision which is one of the interventions for prevention of uti in children at high risk of recurrence that is high grade vur recurrent uti cranberry products can be used for prevention of uti in children with recurrent uti but with a normal urinary tract all children with bladder bowel dysfunction should be managed with urotherapy for prevention of recurrence of urinary tract infection so the recommendations mention one must discontinue antibiotic prophylaxis in children older than 2 years of age if they satisfy all three of the following criteria that is they are toilet trained they have no bladder bowel dysfunction and there is no febrile uti in the preceding 1 year so the strategies for prevention include antibiotic prophylaxis which is indicated in high grade vur recurrent uti in patients with bladder bowel dysfunction and infants with low grade vur surgical reimplantation for patients with recurrent febrile uti despite antibiotic prophylaxis and adequate management of bladder bowel dysfunction cranberry products in patients with recurrent uti and normal urinary tract but there is no data to support its use in patients with vur urotherapy is indicated in all patients with bladder bowel dysfunction so word about vur surgical intervention is mentioned for high grade we know that vur of sacroiatric reflux has five grades surgical intervention is recommended for high grade vur that is grades 3 to 5 it can be in the form of endoscopic injection of bulking agent as the initial therapy this method is minimally invasive but the fact that is that it has low success rate 
The second and the definitive option is ureteric reimplantation. Children with high grade VU. So, coming on to the approach of diagnosing and managing UTI. In patients with suspected urinary tract infection, you first go for screening test, which is urine dipstick and culture if required. In urine dipstick is positive for leukocyte esterase and nitrite which I've all the significance of which I've already discussed earlier then in that case you label the patient as presumptive UTI if however leukocyte esterase and nitrite are negative then in that case you look for risk factors and whether the patient's age is less than six months if yes you start antibiotics prophylactically if no then you wait for urine culture sensitivity report and if the culture sensitivity report is positive, then in that case you go and label the patient as confirmed UTI. You again start antibiotics and continue antibiotics for a minimum duration of 7 to 10 days. Once you start antibiotics, you assess for bladder bowel dysfunction by performing an ultrasound scan. If the ultrasound scan is normal, then in that case you wait for and watch for recurrence of UTI in the patient and if it is there, you label the patient as having recurrent UTI and you further go for late phase DMSA scan to rule out urinal scarring. If however the ultrasound scan is abnormal then in that case you go for an MCU and if micturating cystoerythrogram suggests high grade VUR or there is a history of recurrent urinary tract infection. So this, is the, this was the approach and coming on to the end of this video some very valuable takeaways specimen collection implies collecting the urine by clean catch method in toilet trained children by clean catch suprapubic aspiration or catheterization in non-toilet trained but stable children and suprapubic aspiration and catheterization in children who are sick screening is done by urine dipstick in which you look for leukocyte esterase and nitrate nitrite and or perform urine RM in which you look for bacteria and leukocyturia. The diagnosis is however based on positive urine culture in the presence of suggestive symptoms. Ultrasound scan of the urinary tract should be performed after an episode of UTI in all children. MCU should be done in one of the following that is UTI which is caused by non E. coli uropathogens in children less than 2 years, any abnormal ultrasound scan or a history of recurrent UTI. So, and late phase DMSA is done to look for renal scarring in children with recurrent UTI or with high grade VUR. So, we see that urinary tract infection is one condition. Also, antibiotic therapy should be initiated as early as possible, preferably within 48 to 72 hours of the onset of fever. Initial empirical therapy comprises of uh, third generation cephalosporins or amoxiclav in children with suspected febrile UTI and first generation cephalosporins or amoxiclav in adolescents with cystitis. Oral route is preferred in acute febrile UTI except for in patients who are less than 2 months of age, who are severely ill, who are not able to ingest oral antibiotics. And the duration of treatment is for 7 to 10 days in acute symptomatic UTI and 3 to 7 days for cystitis in which case you give oral antibiotics. So thank you so very much for a very patient listening and watching and hope you like the video and this video is going to help you for a long uh, long term because the guidelines for management of UTI, UTI shall not be revised very soon like it was in 2010-2011 and it has, it has been revised now. So thank you once again for a very patient listening and watching and if you did like the video please do give a thumbs up. Thank you. Thanks a lot.